What is going on, guys? Wiser here, bringing the recap of the last war for Invicta. Uh, it was a random matchup against a very good Brazilian clan. Um, recovered, and uh, you know they they brought the heat here. And in fact, uh, a heartbreaking loss for Invicta. 0.8% total destruction is what it came down to. Uh, recovered, really, really brought some nice attacks and came away for the victory. So uh, good for them. Very tough, tough one for Invicta. Uh, I know it was a heartbreaker, um, but a fun war nonetheless. Like, you got to love when your random matchups end up like this. Uh, but you can see they cleared the board on the nines. Very good job for them. Da -da 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 -da. And... Same thing for the other side. So came down to total destruction, and it was even very, very close in total destruction, not even a whole percent. Um, 94.96 to 94.16. So tough one, boys and gals and Invicta, but, uh, you know, this was a really good practice war coming up for a very special arranged matchup that I cannot announce yet, uh, but you guys are going to be just blown away with the matchup we have coming up for Invicta this weekend. So that is awesome. Uh, both Invicta and 2.0 both have uh, arranged matches. Uh, we, a lot of 2.0 guys, just did the DWA mix scrim. I was going to do a little bit of content from that, but I'm just so far behind uh, on both of my clans' uh, recaps, uh, doing some of these cleanup videos, how to get that base building video done with Caddick. There was just, I just had no time to get the recap done for the DWA mix scrim. Plus, it wasn't, it's more, um, what I find out about those, not a lot of team unity, and it's not necessarily anyone's fault. Uh, it's not like it's bad. Um, it's great practice, um, but you're really just going in and calling a base and just creating your own plan and getting practice on good bases in those things, um, as opposed to you know having some sort of war plan and. Anyhow, is what it is. So I am going to give you guys a really good recap here because there were some really, really nice attacks from the Invicta guys. Uh, let's start it off with Robaz's bully on their number uh, number five here. <clears throat> uh, so Robaz has been getting really good at just, just really um, opening up the correct spots in base to let his witches just roll through it. And you're going to see how this plaque pans out here. So the earthquakes have gone down. He's now opened up basically almost the entire base from this wall down to this wall from 6 to 12. Uh, so he has huge, huge access here. In comes the golems. Wizard's going down. He's going to start creating that funnel. Wall breakers are in. Wall is now open. See you later. King and Queen going to follow him behind. Grand Warden nice and tight. Keeps all his witches right together, and that can be so deadly because we all know if a witch is near a bomb, she's toasted. Like, imagine there's a GB like a little bit closer there, boom, all those witches would have been toast, but uh, whatever. No big deal. Robots just ripping through this base now. Everything just raging into that core. Uh, a little bit late, I think, on that Grand Warden ability because he, he everything had went through the rage and was up in this section when he hit it. Um, probably could have waited just another second, but no big deal. A few hogs now sprinkled in on this Tesla on the outside, even with the heel, because there's not a lot of threat now. Um, the Infernos are down, right? Everything is like, he is just already ripped through almost 50% of his base and all the important aspects of the base, right? There's an Expo, Tesla, a little bit of stuff on the outside, but nothing that these witches and these heroes cannot handle. Queen's working on that Expo now. She still has her ability when she needs it. Don't even think she really needs it this raid. As soon as that air defense goes down, she's going to step up in his pocket, take care of these defenses. Grand Warden's in there protecting her. It is pretty much GG from this point. You're really getting good at uh, at this uh, 11 versus 10 bully robots. Maybe you can back me up on the, uh, on the comment section because I've been discussing uh, what is more difficult, a 10 bullying a 9 or an 11 bullying a 10. Um, and again, maybe difficult isn't the word I'm looking for. I think strategical, I guess, would be the word I'm looking for. Uh, I really, truly believe you still need to be fairly strategical, uh, a 10 versus a 9. Yes, uh, someone did comment. Yes, you can just bring a shattered entry when you're 10 versus 9 and bring a back end, la loon generally, and be okay. But you still need to plan it, right? There's, it still involves a kill squad and a back end, right? This doesn't involve that. This involves a kill squad, 
and a kill squad and <laughs> just protecting them. Um, anyhow, is what it is. Town Hall 11, raping these Town Hall 10s. Tree stars in the bag. Uh, what else I have marked down here? Sorry if I missed an attack of yours, guys, but uh, this Padino has really been uh, impressing me since he's been in Evicta. Um, I think he's been for uh, at least a few weeks now. Sorry if I'm wrong about that, Padino. I think his name's Jake, actually, I think. Um, but he quite often, he always uh, raises the bar and sets his sights high, uh, even though he's number 21 on our map. Uh, he generally likes to try and hit the town, top town all nines always. Uh, not sell himself short on uh, maybe attacking a base with lower level heroes or whatnot. But see, the wall is opened up, opens up uh, the rest of that uh, section of base with that earthquake. You're going to send those Valks in. The CC is taken care of, I believe, or not yet. I'm blind. See, I get rambling on and then I forget. No, there's a CC. So no poisons, which is always deadly, in my opinion. Like, I don't know. Maybe it's just me. Maybe I just. I don't know the way to describe it. I would never, ever, ever send my Valks in without poisons. I don't even know if he knew what was in the CC, but, you know, the, a puff of smoke and a drop of uh, a balloon. I always say puff of smoke. A puff of fire from the dragon and a drop of from a balloon on a, on a compact group of Valks, they're dead. And it, your raid's over, right? So uh, something to think about, Patino. I think you kind of, I don't want to say you got lucky because this was a very sexy attack, but you did get slightly lucky that the everything locked on those golems and those valves kind of worked their way through without uh, without problem. Uh, so as you can see, the hogs are just going to work through the rest of these defenses. No big deal. Still has a, a basically swag heal. He doesn't even need this heal. Does he swag it? Oh, sort of swags it because he didn't even need it. He he healed the cleanup hogs. So, see, he's only got a couple Valks left up there. They did take a little bit of damage going through that stuff, but Valks help him with cleanup. Everything's going down. Patino stepping up once again, hitting one of their top town on lines like a champ. <coughs> and coming away with the tree stars in the bag. Beauty. <clears throat> so that was number eight. I was going to show number nine. Buddy Zero. Zero continues to just be a Town Hall 9 monster. Apparently, I'm only allowed to show one queen charge for recap, um, according to Homestar. So <clears throat> this is it. <laughs> Here's your queen charge. Um, Zero's just creating his funnel. See the three minions. He, he judges all that distance. Get basically gets you know three trash buildings for three minions, which I think is great. Uh, creates the funnel for him nice and easily too. Uh, Queen's gonna start working her way into those defenses. Kind of lucky, I guess that that dark barracks brought her back in, right? But uh, if that dark barracks was dead, she totally was gonna walk up to that lab, but does not because of the dark barracks still being there. So works in, takes out the gold store. She's gonna walk right in here. I swear I've seen. And I've shown the recap. I, I, it's just it's not coming to me, but um, who it was. However, this was such a similar base um, and done the exact same way. Kind of walks in with this queen charge here. Earthquake has gone down. She has access to like this whole right side of the base. Uh, the P.E.K.K.A. does get a little bit scary. He does have to. Guys, if a max P.E.K.K.A. comes out at your queen, if she, as long as she's over level 15, I believe it is. Uh, she can take one swing, but will not be healed up full enough to take another swing. So you have to hit the ability. You absolutely have to hit the ability if a P.E.K.K.A. comes out, uh, which is fine. So uh, he does that. Uh, as you can see, a huge piece of this base is already dead. 30% is down. Kill Squad's now going in. He's got a Wizards kind of creating that funnel for the King. King's going to go in now, start whacking away at this defensive King. Queen's going to stand there for a while and beat on this wall, which is A-OK. -okay. One thing I would have done there, Zero... If you had just moved your jump to cover that corner, the queen would have jumped up and helped you with this stuff, right? If, if you had just given her access. Um, but now that Tesla's popped, she stops attacking the wall and it ends up working out okay because after this Tesla, she's going to go back up and around and into the core and take out this stuff. So uh, another great example, guys, of, in my opinion, a very failed dead zone. It's not a dead zone because, first of all, there's neutral buildings in it. Second of all, there's Teslas in it. And there's a bomb in it. So, I don't know, guys. I don't know who you're fooling there. Dying Amorium. But uh, 
not a very good dead zone use, uh, especially because now what you've done by forcing this huge dead zone in there that isn't even really a dead zone, you're creating easy pathing for the kill squad and the queen and everything else. I'm going to fast forward this. It is GG. He's got a crap ton of hawks with his last compartment under a heel. Beautiful attack. Zero as always. It's tree stars in the bag. <coughs> I don't know what's going on with my voice and lungs today. Uh, I had five, eight. That was nine, right? Yeah. So let's go to 17. Juicy boy. I think Juice had a six star war here. Really nice job, my friend. I don't know if you ever watch Sons of Anarchy Juice. Um, but there was a character in that show called Juice, and uh, one of my favorite characters always called him Juicy Boy. So I'm going to call you Juicy Boy. Uh, you see Juicy Boy here uh, goes in with a shattered entry. Nice and good. I like the side he chose to uh, come in at because look at the army camps. Look at all the low hit point stuff. Super, super easy funnel to create for your Valks. Uh, so six Valks he's got here. Um poisons to go down see now here's the difference right get the jump spell is going to immediately get those poisons down and slow the rate of fire now i would feel a little safer having those valks in there if that poison wasn't there i guarantee you it doesn't matter if the valks are being healed if they take a puff of fire and a drop from a blue never mind two drops because there's going to be two balloons they're dead like they're not going to survive that even under a heal um but you see the second jump goes down is let in you know just nice easy pathing right only ha drops two jumps, but cr literally controls all the compartments his Valks go in at. Uh, so sends it, starts sending hogs at all sections of the base, right? Just really, really just surgically kind of deploying everything, trying to protect the Valks, protect that kill squad in the middle. Um, heal goes down, takes care of the hogs. They're going to continue working the way. All the units are now meeting up in this town hall section. Uh, has a bit of a cleanup minion down there to kind of do work, but clearly it is GG for this base. Just destroyed it, Juice. Nice job, buddy. Juicy boy. <laughs> no regrets, buddy. I missed that picture. You got to get that profile picture back. Tree stars in the bag. Um, what else I got here for you? Nice. Mike O. Mikeo. Mikeo? Mike O. Mikeo, I'll call him Mike O because my name's Mike, so I like saying my own name. <coughs> Damn. Dying this morning, apparently. Um, so I really like Mike's uh, choice here, right? Uh, I just did a video for 2.0. It wasn't a super interesting video because uh, it was a South Korean farming war. However, I did a couple Town Hall 9 attacks that I was kind of talking about just going back to the basics. Um, so... Mike, I don't know, call him Mikhail. <laughs> it's just easier to say. Mikhail here um, just goes with a simple, cold-blooded Lalo. All right? Uh, poison goes down, takes care of the CC. Rage goes down, going to push all the kill squad in. Uh, notice Mike's heroes level. 18 king, 16 queen. So nothing, nothing crazy here, guys. Uh, you know, this base uh, is very on par with uh, with his hero levels. So it's not like he's doing like a beastly 30 heroes versus 10 heroes attack. Um, jump spell goes down. Defensive queen is dead, which is pretty crazy. Look how far that defensive queen went. Pat is here. This smart guy, you know, MM Marquis, leaves four spaces in front of the wall, but it still jumps. That's just retarded. But Mike would have had it anyways because the jump spell was there and would have killed the queen no matter if she jumped the wall or not. Uh, so no big deal. So here comes the Lalo aspect of the raid. Just typical, you know, three Lama Hounds, 13 balloons, 14 balloons or whatever it was. Haste go down, kind of push everything onto the air defenses. Um, or did he bring four Lama Hounds? Oh, that's crazy. I need to pay attention to these attacks. I say a cold-blooded Lalo, but I think he ended up getting two air defense out of that deal. He must have. Because all the air defenses are down, and he's got a crap ton of balloons on this archer tower, and all he has left are these remaining defenses. Uh, really like the early deployment. I've talked about this before, too. When you save a few balloons in the bag to distract a wizard tower from the main group of balloons, don't be afraid to drop it early, because it's better early than late. Because if it's late, 
you're just going to miss it, and then you're going to have a chance of losing way too many balloons. Got a swag haste there. Just a beautiful attack there, Mikhail. That is tree stars in the bag with a swag haste. Beauty. So, guys, I was saying this in the 2.0 recap. Don't get fancy if you don't have to. Cold-blooded Lalo, Shattered Lalo, Shattered Goho, Stone Goho, or, uh, you know, um, a Shattered uh, uh, Govaho or Govalo. Uh, if the base dictates it, uh, I've talked about that before, you know, bringing one witch and, and three Valks or two Valks even instead of a third Golem. Uh, the benefit that can have, but also uh, it does have its downside as well. <coughs> you know, those things don't target defenses. So... It's a lot, it's harder to predict where your Valks and Witches are going to go once they get into a base where you know a Golem is going to go to the defense and just kind of play Plinko through the defenses. But um, is what it is. Heartbreaking loss for Victor here. You know, you guys gave it your best, cleared the board, um, even got that uh, one TH10 triple. What happened on Alpha here? I'm going to take a look at, at Alpha's base here after this because uh, they did get Alpha. It was five versus five, but Alpha's a very new Town Hall 10. I just don't know how developed he is. Um, I don't know if he's more developed than that. But uh, like I said, you know, tough war. Really, really tough to lose a ward at 0.8% of total destruction. But it is what it is. We move on. Like I said, I'm very, very excited for this weekend because i got a lot of awesome content coming your way. And, uh, yeah, that should do it for me here this afternoon. That uh, concludes your wisdom from Wiser. And I'm just trying to help you bag that next tree star. Until then. I'm out.